Yes, yes, yes. What are you guys saying this afternoon? How are you all doing? I'm in EFC, the Sisbury Lions TV, and today, you guys, we have some more breaking news coming out this afternoon. Now, me personally, I've worked very hard on this Lukaku analysis video. I was hoping to upload it today, but with this news coming in, I'm going to have to postpone this video for tomorrow. So, you guys, stay tuned for that one. But with today's afternoon news, we have some major updates surrounding Sal Niguez. Kurt zooming to West Ham and Tino Andrin moving to Russia as well. Um, yeah, you guys, let me get near the end of the trans window. Things get crazy, things get random, and I guess we're literally seeing that right now. So I hope you guys do enjoy. Smash that like button. Get involved in the comments too. I especially, please, get involved in the comments. I want to see a wide variety of opinions, you guys. And without wasting any more time, we start things off and we discuss King... Kurt Zuma, uh, I gotta keep things real, you guys. For me, he's always gonna be a king in my eyes. Uh, I've got a very soft spot for Kurt Zuma. Listen, I put my hands up I actually like football players that play for my team. Who would have thought? But anyway, with the news coming out today, it seems like he is about to make an imminent move to West Ham. It looks like they finally made a breakthrough in regards to the wage valuation that Zuma is hoping to get in the deal. They are happy to meet the 25 million pounds that we want to of course let Zuma go and it seems like Zuma is happy now to join West Ham and sign for them. Potentially their big win against Leicester City, you know, West Ham got some very good players, you know, Rice is still there, Ben Rama, he had to adjust last season but already two goals this season, one of the guys to keep an eye out for for sure. Um, you know, West Ham under Moyes, they're showing some great potential and I think Zuma going there is going to just exponentially just improve their defence just like that. Um, of course, it's a bit sad, of course, uh, just for me personally, only because of uh, all the many seasons that I've seen watching Kurt Zuma. Ah, it's a shame that injury came through and it's crazy how injuries can really just change the whole trajectory of players' careers just like that. But for me, I'm always going to be very grateful for him. Uh, I think he's been a great servant for us and, and to be honest you guys, sometimes I think it's nice to just show our gratitude for these guys. I mean, you know, they put their bodies on the line, they uh, produce a lot more positives and negatives too. And I think sometimes as fans today, especially on the internet era, I feel like we, you know, we forget to respect them and appreciate them. So, Zuma, he is set to be signing for West Ham, which obviously means that the move for Kunde does push on and reports are stating that we will make a new bid to sign Kunde. Um, Kunde, of course, he has agreed personal terms. He has agreed a contract already. He is respectful towards Sevilla. If the move does not happen this season, of course, it can definitely happen next season. But with this move, it always depended on Kurt Zuma leaving first. Now that he's about to go, this frees up a spot now for Kunde and the team. And you know, of course, in one of the big debates recently, it's going to be the debate between Trevor Chalaba and Kunde, who essentially play that same role. Uh, you know, Kunde for me will be exclusively used down that right hand side. Uh, you know, the club's logic, I'm assuming, it has to be the fact that if there's no competition right now, it would make no sense to not sign him. There's no point taking risks that we don't have to take when he's available on the market with no competition for him right now. Um, I mean, of course, you know, you guys, you've heard my thoughts and opinions. I like to keep things very real. At the same time, it doesn't mean Kunde's a terrible player. I think he'd be a great player for us. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what's going to be happening now for this season. But I feel like Tuchel's going to have a few headaches to deal with. And I don't know, naturally with a deal like this, it's going to imply that there are going to be other players leaving the club in this window. And... Would it be a surprise if Jalaba ends up leaving before the window ends? It would be a shame and it would be kind of weird considering that only last week everyone was like up in their arms getting gas. You know, I'm seeing this guy getting six figure likes on socials. Um, I'm guessing those same people now that have the same energy, but that's football, man. That's how the game's always been. Of course, good luck to all these players and, you know, let's see what happens now with these Kunde reports, but you just know things are heating up. And now, we move on to another massive story that broke earlier this afternoon, courtesy of the main man himself in Fabrizio Romano. It involves Saul. And Romano tweeted, and many tweets as official, our interest in Saul is official. We are currently in negotiations and talks to try and sign him on loan with the option to buy set at 34 million come the end of the season. Now we got some more insight behind this whole story. Romano revealed that we've been holding talks with him these past few days. You know, we've been moved discreetly and 
We only find out when the club are prepared for us to know. And of course, Atletico Madrid, uh, let's not forget, they gave this guy a nine-year deal. I've never seen that in football. Uh, bit mad that, um, of course, he didn't really live up to that in that sense. And naturally, they want guarantees that he can be bought at the end of the season. So 34 million, 34 million, it's reasonable in today's market. But for me, you know, I think just last season, at the start of last season, his valuation in the market was worth 70 million at the time. So the fact that his values dropped more than half 12 months later, for me personally, it doesn't inspire me with the most confidence. Of course, things won't be as smooth sailing as we think. Man United are also showing interest in Saul as well. However, of course, Saul is currently following us on Instagram and as we've seen many times every season, once a player we're linked with starts following us, that ends up being the evidence that you just need, to be honest. So, uh, of course, naturally, I'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions, but before I do that, I do wanna say this first. Thomas Tuchel, because he is such a brilliant manager, I'd be stupid not to keep an open mind to see how he plans to use Saul. Um, you know, in football, you guys, you know, remontadas can happen. You know, Saul, new environment, maybe playing under two cool, may potentially that could improve and that could boost them, etc. etc. Some people may say, though, if we can boost players who are underperforming at other clubs, why can't we do that with our own players? That's another conversation for another time, but I definitely feel your energy. But as I'm saying, because Tuchel is such a brilliant manager, I'm going to keep an open mind to see how he could potentially use Saul. Uh, everyone's saying this is a Tuchel signing. Please, man, it's not. And there's nothing wrong with that. We know how the club works, man. They sign most of the players they want and managers accept them. That's how it's always been. But of course, because I've also watched the player and I've seen how he's performed and followed his progress all throughout last season too, I feel like Tuchel could potentially see him as that ultimate utility man. A player that could play as a left wing back at times, right wing back, that can play in midfield, that can play further forward, that can basically do what the manager needs whenever he needs them. Um, it's interesting to see, but to continue on giving my thoughts and opinions, one thing that I personally like to do, every time we're being linked with a new player, I have to try and envision how they're gonna work in our current tactical setup and our team. That's, that's the most important thing. You know, if you're gonna sign a random player that isn't suited towards how we play, it is a waste of everyone's time. And this is where I have some thoughts behind Saul. Um, I see it like this. Last season when Atleti moved to that back three setup and they had a three-man midfield essentially, on paper, this should have been what Saul has always been dreaming of. This this moment to play his proper box-to-box -box role because you guys, this guy is like Mr. Atletico Madrid. In about 341 appearances, half his games have not been played in his preferred position. He's played most of his games on the left mid side. He's played most of his games as a left mid, as a right mid, sometimes as a CDM, sometimes as an attacking mid. And I just feel like after a while, my first Saul was, if he doesn't get that set position, is he gonna elevate, improve, and go to the next level? And personally, I feel like Saul has regressed in that sense. I don't think he has gone to that next level. Uh, Stats-wise as well, last season, they were quite scary in my opinion. There was regressions and everything. Even things that he's known for, like his pressing, like his running, the tackles, they were down, those numbers were down as well. Um, it's, uh, it's a weird one because, of course, he's so versatile. But a part of me feels like, why did Simeone constantly not play him in his best position? He's one of those managers where if he believes in you, he's gonna make that system and team around you. That was never the case with Saul. Last season, he relied more upon Lamar, who had a resurgence last season, playing as like the attacking playmaker in front of Koke and behind. And of course, Marco Lorenzo, who's just gone from strength to strength, and for me, is like the actual upgrades to Saul. And I mentioned earlier, when I look at players, I need to envision how they're going to work in our current team. And, you know, as Chelsea fans, when we look at Kante, Jorginho, Kova, I think we have an understanding of how they perform in the system and maybe certain details and stats that are key. You know, things like progressive passes. I, I think that's one thing a midfield player needs to have if they play for us. And his passes into the final thirds. I mean, it wasn't like he was like top 10, 15, 20. I think he was like top 30 in the league. On top of that too, his progressive runs per 90 also went down as well. So as I'm saying, I'm not feeling particularly inspired and I don't feel that same confidence right now. But as I said at the start, because it's too cool, you always have to keep your mind open 
it'll be interesting to see if Saul's going to rise to the challenge now and, you know, really impress manager because this is the moment he's been waiting for in his career. This is the opportunity to have a resurgence to make his name again. He's come into a team that's going to be incredibly difficult for him to break into, in my personal opinion. Um, so he's going to have to really work hard and show that he's really serious and can make it work here. Because for me, I don't know, maybe Simeone, the development over the years, I just don't see Saul as a master of anything. Like he can do a lot of things good, but not excellently. You know, he can do a lot of things very well. And I think that's why Simeone has used him throughout many positions over multiple seasons. But of course, on a positive, you know, Saul has always been known for his work rate and his pressing. Uh, with our midfield players, that counter pressing ability could be quite handy, could be quite useful. And of course, I think in that sense, he could provide something there. But at the same time, I don't see him particularly elevating any parts of our game. I literally just see him being like, uh, literally just enforcement if we need like, you know, fresh legs for the final 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, etc, etc. Uh, I'm not saying this because I'm biased and I only care about Cobham and I'm looking for any excuse to talk down on his name. Just because I'm watching him and I'd like to think you guys trust my opinions because this is my job. I'm always invested in football. You know, I'm not here to uh, be regurgitating nonsense from the timeline. That's, I've never been about that. And I'm saying this because uh, when I see the comments, I don't want to be seeing nothing about how I'm biased or how, you know, I, 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 I'm not backing to call or just all these same points I keep seeing, man. Bruv, you think I'm putting this work in just so I can have some run for no reason? I mean, absolutely not. But again, it's a weird one because for me, ultimately, you know, he, this is a guy who's always been a box-to-box -box guy, um, breaking forwards. He's got very good long shots as well. But seeing how he hasn't really maximised his career over the past few years, seeing how the valuations drop so much, um, for me, I feel like this is clearly an opportunistic move. Um, listen, in the market, sometimes you have to go for them. And, you know, considering the fact that he is a utility man you can rely upon because he can play everywhere, he might not play it to the very best right now, but he can do that. And the season we're looking to have, that could be quite handy and quite useful. So, you know, my thoughts might be a bit conflicting, you guys, but uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that you'll be able to understand the sentiment that I'm trying to express here. So now we end things with the final story. And this is a surprise one. It involves Tino Andrin. And reports have broken, suggesting that Lokomotiv Moscow, whose sporting director is Ralph Ragnick, they are holding talks potentially to acquire him on loan or even on a permanent. When it comes to loan or permanent, that news hasn't been released at this point in time. We'll find out soon though, but this is another player that's always impressing all the time from what I'm hearing in training sessions. He hasn't really got that opportunity just yet. You'd think maybe if you're not going for Saul's and stuff, would you give Andrew an opportunity to show what you can do? I, I don't see what the issue would be with that, but I guess that's what we're looking to do, to be honest. Um, yeah, this is a, a mad one. Yeah, I don't even know how to really process that because that news was really surprising. And I have to actually wait to see what more information does come out. Maybe as the day goes on or as the next few days come. So you guys, right now, that is all the stories happening and breaking right now. Share your thoughts and opinions below. How do you feel about the potential imminent signing on loan of Saul? Do you think he's the guy? Let us know. And on that note, I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.